Hello, Math 8 students. Today I'm going to be teaching you graphing using slope intercept form. It would be very helpful if you had graph paper for this lesson, but if you don't, you can just draw some graphs on binder paper instead. Please find a clean sheet of graph paper or binder paper and write this title at the top. The slope intercept form is y equals mx plus b. And the y is always going to stay as a y, and the x is always going to stay as an x. The things that change where you're going to have numbers put in, you're going to have a number put in for the m. And the number that goes in for the m is your slope. We've been studying a lot about slope lately. Remember, slope tells you what the steepness of the line is, as well as the direction of the line. The other part that's going to get a number instead is the B. The B is the y-intercept of the line. The y-intercept tells you where the line crosses the y-axis. So the reason why this is called slope-intercept form is because it tells you the slope and it tells you the y-intercept of the line. There are three steps for graphing in slope-intercept form. Step one is to graph the y-intercept. This will tell you where the line crosses the y-axis. For example, let's say we wanted to graph y equals 2 thirds x minus 4. Remember that the y-intercept is the number that is added or subtracted after the x. In this case, our y-intercept is negative 4. So that means that what we're going to do on our graph is we're going to count from the origin. Remember, this is my y-axis, so that means the y-intercept is negative 4. So from the origin, I'm going to count down to minus 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. This is the point where the line will cross the y-axis. So I'm going to put a point right on that y-intercept. The second step is to count the slope from that y-intercept point that you just drew. And I like you to continue counting the slope until you fill up the graph. So if we look back up at our equation, remember that the slope up here is the m. It's the number in front of the x. So in this case, our slope is positive 2 thirds. So I wrote it here. Step number two is the slope, which is 2 thirds. So once again, remember, we count from the y-intercept. Our slope is positive 2 thirds. Remember that the top number is your rise. The bottom number is your run. So from this point, we're going to rise 2 and run 3. So my next point will go here. Sometimes it's nice to actually draw the triangle, so we would rise 2 and run 3. So our next point would go here. Now remember, slope continues, right? So we can continue with our stair step up to over 3 and put another point there. And I can also go in the opposite direction, so I can go over 3 and down 2 and put another point right here. So now I have four points, and now I can connect those points. And that brings us to step three. Step three is to connect the points to form a line. Don't forget the arrows. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect these four points that we drew into a line. And I need to put arrows at the end, because remember, a line continues to go on forever and ever in both directions. Pause the video and make sure you are caught up with your notes before we go on to more examples. Please pause the video and write these three problems down along with graphs that we can graph them on. Let's take a look at number one. Number one, we have y equals 2x plus 3. Remember, the first step is to graph the y-intercept. The y-intercept is the number that is not with the x. In this case, our y-intercept is 3. So what I do is I start at the origin. Remember, the y-intercept crosses the y-axis. 
So I'm going to start at the origin and count up to three this time. One, two, three. So my y-intercept is here at three. So I'm going to put a point there. My next step is to find my slope. My slope is the number that's connected to the x. In this case, my slope is two. So let's count up from my y-intercept. We're going to count up two. Uh-oh, what do we do now? Do we just leave it here? Well, if we did, then it wouldn't have a slope of two. It would have a slope of undefined. That means that we have to go over one. Whenever you see a slope of just a whole number, always put a one underneath it because that will help you know how to count. So once again, we're going to count up two and over one. So our next point is here. Now I don't have any more room in that direction, so that means I'm going to go in the other direction as, instead. So I count over one and down two. I always need to make sure that I keep my stair steps looking exactly the same. If my stair steps make the line not a straight line, then I know that I counted my slope incorrectly somewhere. Once you have uh, several of the points written out, you're going to connect the dots and don't forget to put arrows on the end. Let's take a look at number two. Number two has y equals negative four thirds x plus five. My first step is to find the y-intercept. The y-intercept is the number that's not connected with the x. In this case, my y-intercept is five. So we start at the origin and it's positive five, which means we're going to go up one, two, three, four, five, and put our y-intercept up here. The second step is to find my slope. My slope is always the number that's connected with the x. In this case, my slope is negative four thirds. So if I counted from my y-intercept, a lot of times students want to go up one, two, three, four, but if the graph doesn't let you go up that direction because it's not big enough, you can instead go down one, two, three, four instead. It doesn't have to go up and over if the graph doesn't allow for it. So in this case, we're going to go down one, two, three, four. Now we need to think to ourselves that this is a negative slope. That means that our answer is going to head down, right? It's going to be nice negative. What we've done so far is have a positive slope. Puff, puff, positive, says slope dude, right? But today, or in this problem, we're having nice negative, so we're going down. So that means that when we count down one, two, three, four, we need to think which direction should we go so that it becomes a negative slope. If I go this way and put my point here, notice that's going to be a positive slope. So that's going the wrong direction. Instead, I need to go to the right in this case, one, two, three. So my slope is going to be, or my next point is going to be over here. I'm gonna go ahead and count one more slope. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and put my last point here. That's kind of off the graph, but that's okay. Now we need to connect our points. So we're going to connect the dots. Don't forget to put arrows on the end. For my last equation, y equals negative x minus two, my first step is to find my y-intercept. The y-intercept is the number that's not connected with the x. So in this case, my y-intercept is negative two. Let's go ahead and find negative two on the y-axis. So we start at the origin. Since it's negative, we're going to go down to negative two, which is right here. So my y-intercept is here. I'm gonna put a point there. All right, so now my second step is to find the slope. Now, I want you to notice something that's kind of interesting here. We have a negative in front of the x, but there is no number. Ah, uh, but actually there is. It's just kind of hiding. Anytime you don't have a number there, you can put an invisible one out front, and that means that this slope is actually a negative one. So remember back when we had a whole number slope on number one over here where the slope is two in the equation, but when we counted, we wanted to count two over one. Same thing is true for this slope here. Anytime you have a whole number for a slope, you always wanna rewrite it, in this case, negative one over one. Always put that whole number over one to help you count. So 
negative 1 over 1. It's heading in a negative direction. So if I go up 1, I have to go to the left because I want it to be nice negative. So I'm going to continue with my uh, slope as far as I can go on the graph. As soon as you have all of your points, you can go ahead and connect them. And here we go, we're connecting these points. Don't forget to put arrows on the ends. Please pause the video and write these next three problems on your graph. Let's take a look at number four, y equals x. Now this is kind of interesting because usually you're used to seeing y equals something x plus something. There's a missing piece here, isn't there? Uh, when, it, when the y-intercept is not there, then we can always add a zero because adding zero to anything does not change the meaning of the equation. So that means that in this case, our y-intercept is at zero. So when we graph, we just need to put a point right at zero, right at the origin. That is where the line is going to cross the y-axis in this case. All right, let's take a look at our slope. Our slope, oh no, there's not a number in front of the x. Ah, but remember, whenever you don't have a number there, you can put in that hiding number, that invisible 1. So that means that in this case, our slope is 1. And remember, anytime you have a whole number, you can put that whole number over 1. So our slope is going to be up 1 over 1. I like to call this the perfect slope because it's a perfect stair step. Go ahead and fill in the rest of your points. And once the points are filled in, you're just going to connect them. And don't forget to put arrows at the end. Let's take a look at number 5. Number 5 has y equals 2. Wait a second, where's the x? Well, anytime the x is missing, you can rewrite it this way. y is equal to 0x plus 2. Remember when there was a y-intercept missing, then that means the y-intercept was zero on number four. Well, if the slope is missing, that means that the slope is going to be zero, like on number five. So when we look at this, we see that the y-intercept is two and the slope is zero. So our y-intercept is two. We start at our origin and we go up to two and put a point at the two mark. A zero slope means that it's perfectly horizontal. So that means we don't have stair steps. We just need to draw a horizontal line. Anytime you see y equals any number, it's always going to be a horizontal line crossing the y-axis at that number. And number six, this time x equals negative three. So this time we're going to have a vertical line crossing the x-axis this time at negative three. So since it doesn't equal, since there's not a y in the equation at all, then this means that the x-intercept, not the y-intercept, is going to be negative 3. And whenever the x-intercept equals something, it's going to be a vertical or undefined slope. Okay, that was a lot of information for you. If you need to re-watch this video, please do so as many times as you need. Thank you for watching.